Thanks for staying with us on Insight. He had made his mark at the corridor of justice. Lawyer politician Karpal Singh had also made a huge impression among Malaysians for his tireless commitment to democracy and social justice. His death in a recent road accident has left a deep void in the country's politics. How will the late Karpal Singh be remembered? And will the loss of one of Malaysia's towering figures change the country's political landscape? Across the political spectrum kept pouring in, even as thousands paid their last respects to the late 73-year-old human rights advocate and veteran political leader Kapal Singh, known to many as an uncompromising warrior of social justice and freedom. His untimely and unexpected passing in a horrific road accident on the North South Highway recently has shocked many Malaysians who mourn the loss of an accomplished lawyer and a true Democrat who was willing to fight for his principles to the bitter end. People go into a mode of remembrance and of course they think of what they've lost and what a brave man he was, how he never pulled punches, um, how, how, how strongly he believed in the rule of law. Karpal Singh was born in Georgetown, Penang on June 28th, 1940. The son of a watchman and a part-time herdsman, Ram Singh, Karpal obtained his law degree from the University of Singapore. He was called to the Malaysian Bar in 1969, and that marked a brilliant and illustrious career that placed him as one of the best criminal lawyers that the country ever produced. As a staunch advocate against the death penalty, Kapal fought many controversial cases. Among his many high Profile cases include defending Australian heroin traffickers Brian Chambers and Kevin Barlow in 1986, who were eventually hanged in Kuala Lumpur's Pulu Jail. He has not only built a reputation in the local Malaysian scene, but also he has handled uh, many international cases, uh, especially dealing with drug trafficking uh, uh, and also um, death penalty. But in his relentless pursuit of justice, he also did the unthinkable. In 1986, Karpal criticized the then Sultan Iskandar of Johor and filed a suit against the king for allegedly assaulting two men in his royal palace. He was criticized by Barasan national MPs and refused to apologize. In 1998, he also represented opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim in the latter's sodomy trial and was the lead defense counsel when Anwar was prosecuted for the same crime in 2000. It has come to symbolize, I think, um, a, a type of opposition to, to, uh, to abuse of power. Um, so as you say, he took on a lot of controversial cases. So he was very much a political lawyer, right? Um, so the, the, f the fight was about the law, about whether the law is abused or not. Uh, and about, about protecting the weaker parties. Karpal's political career began when he joined the Opposition Democratic Action Party, or DAP, in 1970. It happened at a time when interracial tension was at its worst. In 1974, Karpal won a state seat in Kedah and went on to win the Jalutong parliamentary seat four years later, a seat he held for 20 years. His reputation as a lawyer and opposition politician earned him the nickname, the Tiger of Jalutong. A voice that roared, a voice that would take on anybody. Perhaps, Kapal is best known for his strong and uncompromising stand against the goal of the Islamic Party pass to turn Malaysia into an Islamic state. He had consistently opposed the introduction of Islamic Hudud law, 
and even criticized DAP's opposition partner when it tried to impose the law in the state of Kelantan. If we recall way back in the 1980s and uh, 1990s, there's this rising tide of Islamization that uh, happened in uh, Malaysian politics. And I think Kaupal also uh, cautions against this rising tide of Islamization in a way that we want a secular Malaysia and we want Malaysians to respect this. In a political career that spanned more than 40 years, as well as a year and a half of detention without trial during the government's Operation Lalang in 1987 to help quell racial tension in the country, Karpal's unflinching tenacity and commitment to stay the course had never wavered. In 2005, a road accident left him paralyzed and wheelchair bound. In spite of all the odds, he contested two general elections in 2008 and 2013. death comes at a time when Malaysia's opposition is at its strongest, winning the popular vote in the 2013 election for the first time in history. Will Malaysia's political landscape change after his passing? We're talking about a, a leader who died at 73, 74. I mean, if, if the system can't live without him, then he hasn't succeeded at all. Right? But I think he's done what he did well, and we have a, in Malaysia a whole new generation of leaders already, right? And they're, they're, they're growing very fast, I think, and they're maturing very fast. From what I see over the last five years, I'm, I'm amazed and, and very impressed by how how quickly they mature. Well, I think it's, a, it's undoubtedly a irreplaceable loss for the, for the party and for the nation. We have uh, uh, traveled the political journey together for 44 years, and... Uh, it has been uh, a tower of strength, very difficult fight for justice, for the rule of law and for democracy. There's an old Malay adage which says, a tiger leaves behind its stripes, a man leaves behind his deeds. Many Malaysians will remember Kapal Singh as a tiger whose stripes patterned the country's political landscape for decades. The tiger of Jalutong will roar no more. But it's his indomitable spirit and unwavering tenacity in upholding the true spirit of law, the constitution and the democratic process. That will be his lasting legacy. Thank you.